from the Lakeside Newsroom of the Henrico Citizen, your hometown news source since 2001. This is the Henrico News Minute with publisher Tom Lapis. Vaccinating students in schools, well, it could happen before the school year is over. And a heartbreaking loss for Highland Springs High School's football team. We'll have details in today's Henrico News Minute. It's Monday, May 3rd, 2021. It's brought to you today by Henrico County. And now for the news. Virginia students 12 and older might have the chance to be vaccinated against COVID-19 in their schools before the school year ends in June. That's according to State Vaccination Coordinator Danny Avula, who said during a call with state media members on Friday that he and other officials will be meeting this week with the state's school superintendents to discuss that possibility. Emergency use authorization that would permit the Pfizer vaccine to be administered to children and teens 12 to 16 is expected as soon as another couple weeks. That same authorization could come shortly thereafter for the Moderna vaccine, according to Avula. Students, of course, would need parental permission in order to receive a vaccine. Vaccines are not expected to be approved for children between the ages of 2 and 11 until sometime early next year, according to Avula. The concept of offering vaccinations in schools is one of many being weighed by state officials as they move into a new and more challenging phase of the vaccination process. There are only perhaps a few thousand people statewide who remain on pre-registration lists for the vaccine who haven't yet been offered vaccinations, according to Avola, meaning that almost everyone in Virginia who's eligible for vaccine and who wanted to get one as soon as possible pretty much has had that opportunity. To date, about 44% of all Virginians and about 57% of those 16 and older have received at least one dose. Now officials are tasked with determining the best ways to reach about another 30% of all state residents in order to get to their designated herd immunity threshold of about 75% of the state's population. But vaccinating even just another 10 to 15% of eligible Virginians could take another three to four months, Avola said, because of how diligently officials at the state and local levels will need to work with partners to reach people who are hesitant about the vaccine or who simply haven't viewed it as a priority yet. In addition to proactive efforts to reach people who have those hesitancies or who are in groups of minorities, state health officials also will focus on a particularly key segment of the population, that being those who are between the ages of 16 and 39, according to Avula. Many people in that age range may not view vaccination as being critical since they're less likely to experience significant effects from the virus if they do get it. More than one-third of all documented COVID cases in Virginia have occurred in people in their 20s and 30s, but those same two age groups account for just less than one-quarter of all vaccinations in the state. The numbers are important because younger people tend to be more active in the community and more likely to transmit the virus if they're not vaccinated. You can read more about this on HenricoCitizen.com by clicking on COVID-19. Henrico County Public Schools will host a virtual question and answer session about the new Henrico Virtual Academy. It'll be May 6th from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Links to the event are being sent directly to families and employees of the system. Henrico recently hired Elko Middle School Assistant Principal Gary Marshall to serve as principal of the new Virtual Academy, which will offer a mix of synchronous classes and asynchronous or independent learning for students in kindergarten through 12th grade. The program is aimed at students who have benefited from the flexibility and individualized environment and focus of virtual learning. Any student who lives in the county may apply. The Academy's application will be available from May 7th through the 21st. Students who enroll will be committing to attend for one full year. Families will then have the annual opportunity to decide if they want to continue in the academy or transfer back to in-person school. Amy Cashwell has indicated that there will not be an application process per se, meaning that all students who choose the virtual program are expected to be able to participate in it, but official acceptance letters will be sent by June 4th. A 27-year-old Henrico man was shot and killed early Sunday morning in Chesterfield County and now Police are looking for a 32-year-old Richmond man in connection with the shooting. The victim was William A. Simpson IV. The shooting took place in the 7800 block of Provincetown Drive in Chesterfield. 
Chesterfield police are now seeking Willie G. Williams III, who's 32 and of the 4400 block of Walder Drive in Richmond. He's facing charges of first-degree murder, breaking and entering with the intent to commit murder, malicious wounding, and use of a firearm in the commission of a felony. Additional charges also are pending. The local housing market continues to show signs of growth with sales outpacing last year's levels in most areas and home prices rising rapidly according to a report from the Central Virginia Regional Multiple Listing Service. The median sales price in Metro Richmond during the first quarter was $310,000. That's a $42,500 upswing from a year ago. The 16% rise is the largest median price increase the area has had in more than five years. The median sales price in Henrico rose 8% from last year, an increase of about $20,000. And Henrico's supply of listings was less than half the level it was a year ago, 52% down. As a result of the low inventory, homes are selling much faster on average in the MLS footprint. The average days on market during the first quarter in the region was 23, which is three days faster than last year. A second grader at Henrico's Echo Lake Elementary School was one of four students in Virginia and California recently honored for submissions to a nationwide contest promoting healthy COVID-related habits. The students were participating in the Kalo the Hero contest based on a character created by Kelly Lambert, a psychology professor at the University of Richmond. Kalo the Hero is a cartoon raccoon whose superpower is science. Echo Lake student Haley Pacioco was the local student who was honored. Her winning entry consisted of a poem and picture about visiting the zoo post-pandemic. It earned her a $300 gift certificate to purchase books for her classroom. And finally, it was a tough one on Saturday for the Highland Springs High School football team, which fell in overtime 13-10 in the state championship football game of Class 5 to Stonebridge High School. The game took place at Verina. After Highland Springs kicked a field goal during its first possession of overtime, Stonebridge faced a third and 16. That's when quarterback Billy Wiles threw a pass to Jacob Thomas, who made an incredible one-handed catch while falling backwards. The play was actually the Sports Center number one play of the day nationally, and it earned Stonebridge the state championship. Highland Springs had beaten Stonebridge in the title games in 2015, 16, and 18. Today's Henrico News Minute is brought to you by Henrico County, which is asking you, how do you want to hear from the county? Visit publicinput.com backslash Henrico News to take a brief survey.